The following is a work of fiction. Please don't take it too seriously. Citizens of Johannesburg, citizens of the world, you are tuned into Airwave Anarchy, the pirate radio station keeping you informed of the state of the world during these troubling times. What you hear on this station will not be found on the news. But this is what the powers that be don't want you to know. Or what they don't fully know themselves. Today's news comes from Russia. Or rather, a Ukrainian epidemiologist based in Russia. Named Lyudmila Shigurov. She gained a fair amount of attention lately for her studies on the relationship between the virus and other diseases. Her most recent experiments tested how the virus would respond to a host carrying a variant of the rabies virus. We do not know the details of her results. What we do know is that the Mela Shagrov disappeared shortly after the experiment. This raises the question, what did Shagrov discover in her lab that caused the powers that be to silence her? Though nothing can be verified, we have sources from a pub in Moscow where her research assistant, the Lucian immunologist Ilya Lysenko, was supposed to be drunk and sharing these observations rather charitably. Supposedly, the rats and mice they exposed to these two viruses grew extraordinarily aggressive. They stopped eating their food and resorted to cannibalism. Naturally, Ilya Lysenko was found missing as well, though news sources cover up his disappearance as a self-imposed quarantine due to his exposure to the virus. Clearly, there is something the Kremlin doesn't want us to know. If the accounts of the Senkos to be believed, then this virus could be the opening act of a much more catastrophic mutation. Now, it is very likely that the matter is far more complicated than what has been said here today. There are likely more factors to take into consideration beyond a mixture of the virus and rabies and host. But regardless of the factors, the results are clear. If this mutation could be the zombification of rats, we must assume that the results could be similar with other animals, humans included. Naturally, there will be those who dismiss my apocalyptic worldview. Some of you will call me paranoid. Some will call me fear longer. But remember, fear is knowledge in the face of danger. And these are dangerous times. testing testing okay here we go 16 March 2020 exactly five days after the World Health Organization declared the virus to be a pandemic you see unlike the rest of you idiots I was prepared when the apocalypse hit it's one of the upsides to being a pessimist you always expect the worst-case scenario most of the time, people grow impatient with my more cynical worldview, but I swear to God it's always useful to have someone who thinks like me in the room. Why? Because when disaster strikes, when the world seems to be at an end, when the worst-case scenario becomes a reality, the only people who aren't surprised are the people like me. Because we've seen it all before. See, I knew a day like this would come. It was inevitable. I knew the shining pillars of human civilization would come collapsing upon themselves any day now. Oh, and I know that technically it hasn't all gone to shit just yet. People still have hope that we'll all come out of this fine. That we've just pressed pause on life and will resume with our regularly scheduled capitalist endeavors, our white-collar jobs with nine-to-five work days, our senseless existence. Don't tell anyone I said this, but... I hope this virus marks the last we'll see of those days. No, the world won't recover from this, I don't think. The damage has been dealt, the die cast, the recessions and depressions are inevitable. Sure, a large portion of the population may develop an immunity to the virus in a few months, those who don't die from it at least, but that doesn't mean the virus won't just mutate and begin to reinfect the population all over again. Once again, this is just me expecting the worst-case scenario. 
but it's my job to do so, and plan accordingly. My roommates, who until now have always mocked my supposedly paranoid nature, are slowly coming to recognize my genius, and to think they used to see my apocalyptic thinking as absurd. See, I'm not like the rest of you amateurs who only started hoarding food when the World Health Organization declared the virus to be a pandemic. I've had these stocks for months. I'm always prepared for a crisis. We have six nine-kilogram gas tanks filled to the rim, dozens of crates of MREs, dozens of canned foods with near-eternal shelf life, dried foods, pastas, rice, flour and yeast to make our own bread when necessary, even a 20,000-liter water storage tank for when the pipes shut off. Hand sanitizers may be sold out, but I've made my own, using rubbing alcohol and hand wash. And while most people are wearing those, uh, serviettes they call medical masks, I'm equipped with proper double respiratory gas masks. That Walter White shit that don't let in anything half the size of a goddamn hydrogen atom. I am ready for this. Nash's car is sitting in the garage with a full tank, and twelve more bottles of petrol in the trunk as reserves. I used the birthday money I got from my parents last November to buy a second-hand generator that still needs a little fixing before it's ready to power the house. We have a first aid kit, a fire extinguisher, gardening supplies, and stocks of seeds for if we were to run out of food. Although that's unlikely to be the case, since everything I've stocked up on so far is enough to last us an additional four months once the bi-weekly consumables in the fridge are exhausted. <sighs> now... All of this may seem unnecessary, since the apocalypse hasn't really happened yet. Most of the grocery stores are still open and selling, even if their shelves are a bit emptier than usual. And the gas stations and hospitals are still open for business. But the moment things take a turn for the worse, the moment the infected start contaminating the food in stores, causing them to shut down, the moment the gas stations run out of gas and the hospitals become overrun, that is when we bunker down. I already wrote out a survival guide, detailing the rationing of food, energy consumption, security measures for if anyone attempts to get into the house, everything. I held a house meeting and shared it all with my roommates. The reception was, uh, mixed, to say the least. Sarah thought I was being needlessly cautious. Lionel didn't even bother to read it, and Nash, well, he just laughed in my face and walked out of the room. But Allison, she understood. Kind of. She agreed to be in charge of the rations and make sure the food in the fridge lasts us as long as possible before we need to resort to the emergency stocks. It's nice to finally have someone on my side. Of course, there's still Nash, the man most opposed to my preparedness. I know what he says to Lionel and Sarah when he thinks I'm not listening. He forgets that we all live in the same house and that the walls are pretty thin. You know what he calls me behind my back? A catastrophist. He says that I wasn't just prepared for the apocalypse. I wanted it to happen. Obviously, that's not completely true. I'm not happy about anyone being sick or dying, about people's lives being ruined, about the end of international travel. But I must admit, this virus has been uh, stimulating my mind in a way I've yet to experience until now. The world is astonishingly boring during peacetime. It's tough to find meaning in the daily grind of university and part-time jobs and weekend social gatherings. It's tough to feel like life really amounts to anything. But this virus, this threat to the lives of the populace, this catastrophe, it's given me a project. It's given me purpose. And that purpose is to stay alive, and to keep everyone in the house alive. It's the most basic human instinct, but it's taken me 21 years to actually feel that need, that instinct. Self-preservation is my project. And for as long as these idiots I call roommates stick to the goddamn plan, we'll all be just fine. Things are still relatively stable now, but in the event of the apocalypse, it'll be the people like me the catastrophists, as Nash calls us, who are bunkered down and ready to face the worst. As I said when I started, unlike the rest of you idiots, I'm prepared for the apocalypse. But then again, 
If anyone but me is listening to this right now, it means something didn't go according to plan. Which, uh, probably means I'm already dead. End recording. <laughs>